Hi, I'm Love, and this is Episode 2 of Lovecast. Today, we're saying goodbye to Anime Boston. Three weeks later. Do you know why? Con Plague. It hits people even when they try to avoid it. This year, it hit people that usually don't get it. Unfortunately, that includes me. Usually it's exhaustion, you know? But no, someone stinky in the room had to ruin it for everyone. <clears throat> but let's move on from that, shall we? I think this year I can say with the changes and the different things I tried, it was a successful year. They had good guests. The systems that they put in place this year worked out relatively well, which I'll get into. And there were minimal problems. So before I get into anything, I'm going to put a little context here. I'm a cosplayer. I volunteer as much as I can when I'm not doing cosplay events or helping out the cosplay staff. I'm not really staff, but they're good people, they're my friends. I am going to help them. Okay, there's your contact. 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 Ship. Back. Let's take the time machine and go all the way back to Thursday. This is the 23rd. 23rd? Yeah, should be. Yeah, so I'm getting in. So let's all hop on the time machine and go all the way back to May 23rd. Now, May 23rd, I left really early. That's when I put up episode 1.5, not episode 2 with what I may or may not have said, and I got in Boston around 11.30. So 11.30, I had to get my luggage out of the car, I had to check it in, and book it all the way to the Heinz Convention Center for orientation, because volunteer, I do stuff right away. So volunteering comes with a few new perks, well, perks are more like badges, now volunteering not only gets you a reimbursement for your badge, but if you do the right amount of things and everything, you can also get achievements in forms of badges and stuff. So eventually you can stack them and everything, but now you get food, you get prizes, you get all this good swag and everything. You can win things and games over the weekend, and now badges, which I can't get. And I'll tell you why later. You will find out when I get up to Sunday. But orientation over, we get a few things. We go over to registration to put all of those pamphlets together. You know, the booklets with the schedule, the con chowder, and everything in it. We put those together. We have to put the lanyards and the badge holders together. And it can be tedious. Tedious but fun. We call it the lanyard party. Yeah. Better than the book party. Those have paper cuts. Lanyard party aside, there were a couple of other things once we started getting closer to registration opening, which meant all those people that lined up. I don't know why you people line up like at 6 or 12 in the I don't know why you line up so early. Really, I don't. There's no point. Well, you get bragging rights, but not much. Everyone that you could brag to is online, or they'll just spend 30 seconds and get their badge and like, yeah, you got the same thing, just in a snap. <laughs> so I rocked this little outfit from a shirt I got last year that I adjusted so it fits a little better, which it really doesn't, it's still too big. <clears throat> and a wig and all these other colorful clothes just to get people in the mood, to get them pumped. Yeah, you like that? Pumped. <clears throat> I'm getting over the conflict. And, you know, one thing I learned last year is that when people are getting shuffled, they're getting herded like sheep in a nice little line. They used to complain about how the volunteers would lead them on and they'd be so gloomy and I turned it around. I made it fun. I danced and waved people on instead. Went along with the music whenever people were playing it. So, generally, Thursday went like that. We did registration, stuff, putting everything together. We shuffled people in, and it, 
went smoothly, it went nicely, and then I was done at 7, and then we could relax, enjoy the hotel, which I will get into in a moment, but overall just relax until it was Friday. Now, our hotel, I stayed in the Sheridan. Crazy prices aside, it was so good, guys, you have no idea. We were upgraded to a presidential suite. This means we're up on the 29th floor, which is where a lot of the guests are. And, oh, there's so much room. There is an entrance hall, then a living room, where there's a pull-out couch for the... and a TV, and this desk, chairs, little ottomans and everything. And then there's doors that will open up to the bedroom itself, which is a king-size bed. So nice, guys. You have no idea. Unless you are actually in the room. Then you do have an idea. I know that much. Uh, but two bathrooms. More mirrors than you could need. Movable ones. So if you something's busy, you could take out the smaller mirror and work on makeup or whatever. And the best part, if you have a card, you can go over to lounge and get free drinks, free food, free breakfast. People kept on grabbing the waters and the sodas and stuff, but you can get things like lattes and mochas and coffee and hot cocoa, and it was great. And I think there was a pool. I am not sure. I didn't go because I was too exhausted. Hotel drama you do not need to hear. Just, uh, I'll mention the name and stuff to, of who to avoid in the information, okay? So look for that. Keep them away from your hotel. Let's go into Friday. Friday we got to really see the bag check, the new security weapons check system. And I liked it. It was really smooth and it was easy for people to know where to get their weapons checked. Bag check had simple lines. People that had costumes on would go over to the side to have a quick scan or you know people that had big bags things like that and then on the table the security people that work for the Heinz they did very well they didn't get too pushy or anything they did a quick scan it took me no more than 10 seconds even when I had uh, big stuff so I just get my hours done the best I can with volunteering before I move on to the death match those of you who went you know how awesome it was now, I was in it. I was one of the earlier matches. I didn't win, but that is okay because everyone was great. And the Lightning, she did so good. That was real metal. So when she did all of that, all that dancing that you people got her to do for the standoffs, she did that in real metal. And let me tell you something, it is not easy for her to sit in that. She can't. She's more like laying down in the straight line just trying to find a way to be comfortable. But Deathmatch really went smoothly. The audience did great for the participation. And just so you know, at the end for the Sailor Moon fight, all of us planned that all the people in short skirts, including Deadpool, you know, because it just worked, we said, mini skirt squad. Like, let's all do it. No matter who won, like it would go, yeah, Sailor Moon, or, ah, that's what you get, Sailor Moon. <laughs> and we had to practice that each time because we did not know when to do it. Deathmatch aside, I got to see a bunch of different cosplayers. I got to do different things of volunteering than I did last year, which included a bit of security, uh, helping out with merchants on setting up, and, well, the other stuff I usually do is going to the Masquerade HQ and working at the repair station. Aside from this, before the dating game, After Dark dating game started, I was mostly seeing other cosplayers and they were a lot of good ones. I am happy with how it came out. Like, everyone was great. I didn't really come across any huge jerks or anything. I mean, the stinkiest person that was rude was in my room, so I had a pretty low bar that people would easily get to. After Dark Dating Game was in a different area than last year, and I think that 
it wasn't the worst thing, but I think it was a bad choice just because of how popular it was. Even though we were no longer 18 plus officially, nothing really changed. And I think it hurt how many wanted to be in there, but they couldn't go because there were no seats left. And I don't know, everything else seemed to go rather smoothly for the most part. Everyone was great, the people that were participating didn't have any huge mishaps. It was a success. So after the After Dark dating game, I went over to Cosplay Court Case. It's not been an official games thing. It's not run by staff, but it was good. It was funny, it was a little, you know, crude and everything, but it's 18 plus and everyone just wants to be silly. And yeah, I don't know how I feel about it completely. It was fun. The Deadpool there was really great. The Abe Lincoln. I got to see that guy the whole weekend. He is a great guy. Like this is just another chance to meet great people and it was fun. It was a li it was pretty funny. I I did enjoy it, but I think that's because inside all of us are a little twelve. So after that it's just back to the room, get a three hours of sleep before I'm up, back in cosplay, and back to volunteering and everything to get my hours in, because you have to get 14 or 18 hours in order, no, it's 14, definitely 14, before you get your badge reimbursed. And let me tell you, that is a lot if you're in all the game stuff. Now, Saturday is a big day for everyone, whether you're an attendee, staff, or anything. This is not just because it's the one long day where everyone comes in because of masquerade or concerts. Actually, it's exactly that. There is a lot going on the entire day, especially from the afternoon on. Like, you can't get a break if you really plan out every little thing you want to do. My day was just packed. When volunteering, I was mostly helping in cosplay repairs for people that are doing the masquerade because by this point some of them have worn it for the second day or they've been trying it out for that day and there's these little problems so Saturday is the real crunch day and the huge hit on the supplies for the cosplay repair station and they need as many hands as possible I think I spent at least a third of my day there if not half <laughs> aside from slaving over needles and hot glue guns I helped out Billy, who was dressed as Ash Ketchum and Seto Kaiba for the events and everything he hosted and everything. Uh, I helped him out with a couple of things to support or extra hands, basically. The trophy he gave out for a masquerade, I helped him, you know, because he wanted to make it his own flair and it was great. He actually added cookies to it, aside from the Tassley cake and everything. But event-wise, there was only one thing I was really able to get to that was that I was in, which was the normal dating game. It was fun, and I, I always have problems with the microphone, so I'm going to suggest to them that people can do sound checks. That way everyone can hear each other, they don't have trouble speaking into the mic. But it was actually pretty good. We were really nice our round. Like, we got a little sassy, a little spicy. But for who was playing in that round, it really worked out very well. And it was a little entertaining, well, a little, a lot entertaining. It was really fun for all of us in there. And, you know, it worked out really well, aside from technical issues, which I don't know if anyone really picked up on it past the contestants not really hearing the question. The event basically went smoothly. There were recognizable characters for people that were into the popular stuff and even less popular stuff. Like, there was something for everyone and to fit Anime Boston's theme. With it, I also want to really give a thumbs up to the woman that was playing Ash's mom, the co-host. She actually had gotten injured before. So afterwards, after she had tripped and everything, her knee was hurting so much, but she powered through the whole event without showing a sign of that. So just a huge thumbs up to her, and I can't wait until I see everyone again next year for the dating games and everything. Past that, masquerade, masquerade. 
Aside from helping out and just being there for people before the masquerade officially started, uh, I enjoyed it for the most part. I don't like that there were so many dance-based skits, but I like the ones that had drama and a story in it that was really gripping and everything. But too much dancing. I know it's popular, it's just after a while. But some of the people, this youth one, the youth one was great. So let's go into the earlier joke I said with a ship full and intermediate. Well, that was our MC, but based off of this one skit by the youth group. It was a Wind Waker, you know, a Legend of Zelda Wind Waker type of skit, where they where these two kids and it felt well, Zelda, I should say Petra, reacting because Link doesn't really talk. He does, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, things like that. The sound instead. He smokes, I guess. And she's just trying to work through it. And it was entertaining. It was good. The costumes were good. The sound was decent. You could hear almost everything perfectly. There was just the whole ship full, them thinking it said something else. And, you know, that worked. That worked for the night. And they did good. They were the only youth division class skit, I think. And, you know what? I am glad for them. They deserve the award. They deserved it. Other notable ones I mentioned before, the Black Butler one. That was dancing, yes, but very dramatic. It had Undertaker puppeting them. It didn't really work for canonical reasons, I'm sure, but it was entertainment. And that whole what-if thing worked. And the costumes were good. The... There was a wig mishap, but they kept on going, and that is what was important. Other than that, there was the Subasa one, there were a few others. The Master Division Metal Gear one was entertaining. <laughs> uh, you can find this stuff online, okay. Uh, <laughs> so, we're gonna go past that. AMVs, the people that won were okay. Most of them I agree with. The Wolf Children one, for example, that one was really good. That one made me cry. Fuck. I mean, holy shit, that was dramatic and made me cry. How do you... It was not okay, but it was great. Some of them I don't get. The humor one was the disturbing kind of humor, and for that it was pretty good. The Evangelion one, that one had great editing and timing. I loved it for that. I don't know about the rest, but... You know, the romance one, I'm not being bitter because my team is making time less, okay? I was not expecting to make that far anyway. But the Seven Days with Susamina was not really romance. It was good and entertaining, and it might have gotten people's attention more than the rest of them. I mean, it's a popular series still, somehow. And, you know, it's a popular song. Well, not popular, it's, it's actually popular, but... It's well known and well made fun of, actually. But I think it would have done better in comedy instead of romance. Now, if you are an um, anime music video editor, I suggest actually submitting stuff for the comedy section next year because we really need more, more entries for it. Otherwise, it's really going to go out for a bang and just merge into something like Other or whatever. Post Masquerade, I brought some stuff over to the Cosplay HQ and everything, and I moved over to get into the Eureka concert and Raj Ramaya, and they are pretty good. I like the Eureka and everything, but I also wanted to go to Cosplay Shenanigans. Unfortunately, they had a line that continued forever and ever and ever, and no one could get in, and people stayed online even a half hour into the panel. So I went back to the concert. I, well, no, I went into hentai dubbing, which was funny. It was funny. It was obviously childish, but a lot of the improv 18 plus stuff is childish. That is one of their charms. And when that was over, I went back to Auriga. I enjoyed her. She's, she's good for a live artist, really. I enjoyed the music. I think I liked Raj Maya a little more, but she enjoyed herself, and that was what was important. So we get our three hours of sleep, and we hit Sunday. 
Sunday is basically the quietest small day because it ends early, you know, and people just don't want to go there for a few hours instead of most of the day. But we go to cosplay chess. I got my last hours, and with cosplay chess, I was more of the understudy. It's actually unbelievable. For the first time ever, we had perfect attendance, not only during uh, rehearsal on Saturday, but on Sunday, everyone showed up. Not even the people, not just the people on the board, but the, we had at least a dozen or so understudies, and no one was needed. No one, not really. And it worked out great. Everything was smoother than it normally is. So instead of really getting on stage, say for a two second thing, I helped out, make, made sure people's costumes were in order, helped them really understand how things were going because it was their first cosplay chess year. And really everything went out nicely. The cost plot wrapped up well. It is set up for a good next year without having to rely on previous years. And you know what? I like that. I like that they don't have to do too many years of backtracking, but you can still enjoy it with or without that knowledge. And because of it, it it's why Anime Boston is unique, and it works out very well. So Cosplay Chess wraps up. We do really well. We actually ended a little early because everything went smoothly for once. This year, people did not get the pieces too mixed up. Everything went according to script. Yes, there was a script this time because of cost plot, which wrapped up really well. I like the cost plot, how everything from the previous years wrapped up and it's ready to continue next year, but not rely on previous events as much. It worked out this year because of ghosts and yokai, but I really like the feeling of a fresh start to not alienate new attendees. But the cost plot really, aside from me saying it a million times, it, it's what makes Anime Boston unique and a little warming, welcoming really. It invites new people. You don't think so, but every year there are new people. Yes, there's repeat people and some that will go from event to event, but that's generally because of qua costume quality, the themes that fit in, or there's just a little nod that they want to make that with the music. So we wrap it up and it's time for closing ceremonies. I go back to Volunteer HQ because being in chess, I miss their closing ceremony, so I don't get all my swag and free loot from all the hours I worked. You know, which is okay, I made that choice, but I'm still bummed about it, you know? You get the shirt, you get a, you know, pins, pins, badges, you get a chance to go on that lottery thing which goes to next year's prize pool and, you know, just everything in general. And I missed that, but once I got that wrapped up, I got my 14 hours completed, I got to the closing ceremonies, and got to enjoy it. Had to rewatch the AMV winners, but it's okay. So closing er ceremonies ends, you get to see the last of the straggling cosplayers and everything. I go to Volunteer HQ, again. You know why? Ultimate Ninja. I never really got to play the previous years because the costumes I was in was all white. And you don't play Ultimate Ninja in only white. You don't. Especially not nice white. Bone white. But yes, first time getting to play Ultimate Ninja for the first time properly. And I did okay. You know, for a first timer. I even accidentally got two handfuls of boobs from it. And I think that's something of a success. They got pictures of it, and yeah, that's going to be remembered for years and years and years. Really, it was a good, successful year. We weren't bombarded with too many certain cosplayers. There was a good mix. The traffic flow was not too jammed up. I liked the panel choices, cost plot, the theme, everything was nice. Nice! Like, really good. Now, I'm definitely attending next year. Like, this is my community. These are people I meet every year, I'm good friends with, and we just sync. 
And it's not because we're just being retarded over one little thing. It's because we actually get along, we agree, we talk to each other. It's more than cosplay, it's more than anime. Like, Anime Boston is anime, but it is friendship. And friendship is magic, and I am never going to say that again. Quote me on that. Throw it back in my face next year or something. But really, really, guys, Anime Boston is just like a vacation home. A place where you get to get away from everything. You get to set it up so you are around people you get along with. People that you have good chemistry and enjoy each other's presence. Not just because of anime, though. We are geeks, and we have similar views in, you know, if you set yourself up to be around the right people. If you know when to hang around people, even if they're strange. Like, strangers. I mean, you're strange too. You're at a convention. You're gonna enjoy yourself. And that is why I keep on going to Anime Boston. It, it's been my convention for the past seven or eight years. And I love it. But we're coming up on the half hour mark. And that is enough for Lovecast. So if you're just sick of hearing about conventions only, like, not until July will I be doing one for Otakon. So you can go and comment, bring up things that you want to hear about, questions. Like, I'm not just into anime and cosplay and stuff. I do a lot of things, and you can ask about that. I will answer. Video games, normal games, stuff. It's up to you on how varied Lovecast is. So, once more, this is Love. See ya!